and go live okay here we go hello everybody welcome to tongues and runes we've got a few people here watching we're just gonna keep that up and uh we will sort out let me uh grab the chat hi jake pop out the chat move it over here so that you guys can have the chat on here and we are still working on draconic here hi miles how you doing uh apologies for not having a patron poll because um you know the i said that that it would be about mood and like my mind got stuck on that and i couldn't think of a question that i actually wanted to have a patron poll on for mood so i will make sure from now on that i have a clearer idea of of what that is going to be so that i can have something but uh so let's pull up what we've got now Here we have our notes. We've got we've got a lot done with nouns. We have we have figured out that number and case is marked on nouns. <laughs> oh, magpie, you're pl you have this on while you're playing D and I'm <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of group is uh, <laughs> you're in that uh, is happy about doing that. <laughs> okay, just for just to to get the correct option when we have a poll. Okay, I understand. Um, I'm going to open up. Let's let's do a little bit of rolling. I've done a lot more work on my dice tables, um, which I think I've done everything to figure out like the major categories for nouns and verbs. And also, like, whether adjectives are a thing and optional things like articles. Are there even articles at all? Um, all of that is down, whether there are ad positions. Ad positions are actually quite common. Ah. Troll. What did, what did I do then? Um, uh... Uh, can, I, can I zoom in? Zoom. 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 200%. So that you guys can actually see. Ad positions are really common, but it's in interesting. I knew that this would have an effect, but um, <laughs> I ended up having a situation where like, so if you happen to have a language that has oblique cases, um, then you can do without prepositions, right? Because you could have your genitive, your locative, and, and all of those and not need to worry about it. But um, in Grand Bank, there are a few languages that are marked as not ha having oblique cases and also not having prepositions. So just for fun, I included that. So like, not quite a one on a d20 right it's like less than than that chance but if you get roll real unlucky on these tables then you will end up having to have <laughs> um a language with no oblique cases and no prepositions so good luck figuring out like how to express any kind of locative or benefactive or any kind of those expressions. That's the kind of thing that the kind of like off chances that I want to have in, in my dice tables. Some of some things I do like include exclude things that like there's one language in the data set that has this value. And I'm like, hmm, could be a statistical fluke, could be an analysis error. I'm not going to have it. But uh, in general, we're going to have this. 
Now, so I had said that we were done with nouns. And we were basically done. But let's see, where is my... There was one... Um, there was one piece that I had not done. Um, and that is, how do you mark possession? Uh, the, there was a the piece... Hey, Bibleridian! <laughs> Uh, I hope Magpie is not GMing while, while I am, uh, <laughs> yeah, Magpie. Okay, good. You, you are a, a PC. I would hope that you would not be uh, a DM or a GM while, while listening to this, because that seems like information overload. That seems like too much to handle at once. Um, but anyway, I hadn't gotten how possession is marked and that really can affect noun morphology because uh you know the possession could be marked on the noun either the possessor or the possessee um, and we can get into what that means but for now and i can't easily put my phone to the screen now so i'm going to do it a different way I'm going to um, stop presenting and I'm going to just bring my camera down to my makeshift uh, dice tray and we're just going to roll. Let's see what the number is. 16. Is that the 6? Yeah, that's a six. Okay, 16. So let's go back and get you my screen so you can take a look. And so a 16, that's between, um, and we do not have oblique cases. This does not seem right, actually. I think I have these backwards, actually. Let me check my um, my actual math real quick and see where I went wrong on that. I'm just going to quickly pull this up because that seems weird. Um, possession. Uh, languages with oblique marking. Okay. No. So when, when you have oblique marking. Okay. And let me pull into R and, and just double check this. Uh, where is my possession? By the way, all of my work is just on a single R script that is basically just, you know, yeah, so possession, possession oblique, yes, and it's GB072 and GB073, which uh, should be. Uh, bring it on here so so you can see what I'm looking at. Mm. Oh, the no 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 oblique, oblique. Yeah. So are there more? Yeah, O seven two and O seven three. Right, it ex it's excluding that. It's it's including that, and then yeah, mm -hmm. possession no nobly. Okay, so I think I got that right. So 
with that, since there is no oblique marking in this language, then we're saying that there's no special marking for possession at all. Which, so, that means it's going to be marked syntactically in some way, it's, or either we're only going to be able to use... <laughs> Uh, oh yes, yes. I have. I hadn't used R Studio and since um, grad school. I used it very extensively for my PhD, and then like uh, I, I was trying to do stuff in Gram Bank that you can't do on the site. In this, on the site, you can only compare two features, which is not ideal for the kind of thing I'm doing for my dice tables. Because there's there's like more than two dependencies in a lot of the cases, um, so I learned that you can use this Ling typology package to download. It actually downloads from a bunch of linguistic databases, although the Walls module doesn't work very well. I I I found that out. Um, but you can get Gram Bank data out of it, and you can do things that you can't do on the site, much more powerful. Anyway, so we don't have any special marking for possession. We'll come back to that. That may be something that we use an add position for. Um, so so we'll, we'll I, I'll make a note of this. Uh, possession is not marked on nouns or pronouns. Okay. Can you guys see that? Okay. So we're going to move on to verbs. Now, we already decided uh, two, a couple things. One is there's no tense marking. There is aspect marking, at least perfective in perfective is marked as an affix on the verb. There are also uh, mood Mood, there's mood marking on the verb, and there are separate mood. Um, the way the walls feature is, the way the grand bank feature is worded, it could be either auxiliaries or particles. I'm going to aim for modal particles because I don't have anything else that goes on an aux auxiliary either. So it just makes more sense. Um, yeah. It's, so the, the difference between walls and grand bank for what I'm doing, walls, like the structure of walls would actually be better if it weren't for the fact that the grand bank sample is bigger. Uh, right now I'm fighting with the word order features on grand bank. In walls, it's just straightforward SVO, um, SOV, VSO, OVS, you're right. <sighs> On Grand Bank, there are there's one feature for intransitive verbs, either SV or VS. And then for transitive verbs, you've got either verb initial, verb medial, or verb final. And I it doesn't have seem to have any feature for order of the verb and the object. I know that a lot of other places they they actually don't refer to subjects and objects. They separate out subject, agent, and patient, but I don't see any order of verb and patient either. So it's kind of annoying. Like the the top line, it's and and the the percentages are different too. Because um we've got um you, you guys have got me on a tangent by accident, I'm sure. Um I can't I can't see my tabs. Uh, hi, Jonathan. Um, but like, Walls has like a 41% SOV and then 35% SVO. Gram Bank, I'm not sure if the, the numbers are the same uh, because for also, the walls has this no dominant word order. Grand Bank breaks that out a lot, and I think they analyze it in a totally different way than uh, than um, 
than 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 Walls does. So it's it's kind of a, a big mess. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Madame Knees on the D and D language front. I was telling my BF my idea for a great old one warlock whose patron is obsessed with knowledge and takes the form of a green feathered owl. Yeah. Does great old one get um, like the speaking in tongues ability? Uh, that's one thing that I want to like part of if I, my, my plan would be eventually to like do some kind of supplement for, for my languages for each of my languages and possibly a, a supplement for, um, doing my, with my dice tables. That is like how to create a language for a, a, a D and D game. And, uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm, it, it's an interesting problem because I would want to, I would want to also include rules for how language is handled. That's a little bit more robust than the way it is in D and D where it's like just binary, you either speak a language or you don't, but that also means that you also have all these abilities that allow you to speak in tongues. And that's an interesting problem. I think um, when we did an episode on that in Conlangery, Joey Windsor had a, a great idea that he uses is that when you cast like comprehend languages or tongues or something, you get the literal meaning, but there might be idiomatic like there might be idioms that you don't understand what they actually mean. <laughs> uh, oh, you can communicate telepathically with any creature that speaks any language. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, 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 and that, that definitely fits for a great old one ability, right? They are outside of, outside of normal space and time. That's another thing about D and D is that, the world building is sort of the whole general uh, fantasy mis mishmash. And you've got all these entities to me, like the elder God sort of Cthulian mythos creatures, the Fae and the demons all kind of overlap in the kinds of roles they take in fantasy stories. And it seems like a really interesting problem making a world where all of those have a place and have a distinctive like feel to them. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. And, uh, Goo patron. Okay. <laughs> Goo. Okay, so we have verbs are marked for this, but we have a lot. I have a lot more tables for verbs. And um, I think I'm going to do some more roles. Maybe we can do some votes at, on, on some of these things. Uh, one thing I'm doing on the morphology is I am taking all of these things for categories, um, but I'm not super into making, having it determine how those things are marked. I might use, I did make, I did actually make tables for uh, like subjects, like for the, the prefix and suffix things. But I'm not sure if I'm going to ever actually include those in the final version because I kind of feel like you should use the tables to figure out what things are contrasted and then w how it's marked will sort of fall out of how you develop your language. Like you'll choose in the proto language to mark it with a prefix or a suffix and then maybe there will be changes that will cause a stem change or a an infix or something like that. But 
Well, we do need to determine, we have done all the TAM marking, right? And we've decided we have aspect marking on the verb and we have mood both on the verb and on some kind of particle. Um, <laughs> and then, so, uh, we're going to go and do verb agreement. And so originally, and I may go back to this, originally I had verb agreement split into whether you had ergative indexing or ergative flagging, right? An ergative case or not, because that it has an effect. There's, there's an implicational hierarchy there where you, you can only have ergative alignment on the verb if you also have ergative alignment on in case marking. But uh, I haven't, I, I've decided to go with just doing all languages for now. I may change that in the future. But we are going to go ahead and do some roles. Um, and you guys can see what, what the elements would be. And um, Actually, can I do this? No, it's going to it's going to be a recursive loop and be confusing. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh stop presenting again and bring you to my dice. And we're going to roll on what arguments are indexed on the verb. Are we going to mark? Are we going to mark subjects and? Uh, uh, are we going to mark just subjects? Are we going to have the patient? What are we going to do? And we have a thirty-six. Okay, get this back up here, and let's uh, let's present again my screen entire screen this one so what do we get with a 36 subject agent agent and the patient we have to mark both subjects and objects basically because if if i'm doing subject and agent then i'm going to assume this is a, a nominative alignment actually we'll we'll split it there and just say that it's in, indexed by the same thing so we've got these subject agent and patient so let's go back to our notes uh, and we'll translate that into stuff that we can use uh well um draconic notes verbs agree with the subject and object. Yeah, that's a lot of activity on in the in in the the chat today. Okay, <laughs> I I enjoy, I enjoy seeing you guys having some fun in there. Um, so we're going to have. Okay, so. And then. Uh, there's a few other things that we can roll for. How how clearly can you guys see when I'm when I'm presenting? How clearly can you guys see my dice if I keep the presentation open? I just want to know, just just so I can decide whether I want to do that way. Because I know Riverside does a weird thing and makes it super tiny. Uh, okay. Um, for now, while I'm waiting for that answer, I'm just going to go ahead and stop presenting again. And we're going to roll on the voice marking table. Um, uh, we're going to roll on the voice marking table. And what 
is that that's a 43. So we're going to, so 43 means there's no voice marking at all. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to be creative because that means we don't actually have a passive voice construction and we're going to have to have other ways to do, um, do passive voice. We got that by the skin of our teeth too. So let's, let's go on and we'll go to some valency operations or oblique marking. And, um, so this is, this is, um, causatives and applicatives on one table, uh, because they, they seem to go together a little bit in the data. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you would, you would believe me if I just told you what, yeah, but I mean, it's more fun if people can see what I roll, but I kind of want you to see the chart and the roll at the same time. Um, if, if this doesn't work, I may have to switch back to OBS, but I have like reasons for wanting to try Riverside. So we're going to decide this table valency operations and we've got a 42 again oh that was close to it so we have a closet causative that changes transitivity uh so and this is going to take, take some explanation but if if we if it had not changed transitivity it would mean it would only apply to things that are already transitive and then make them die transitive, which I don't know how that makes sense, but it's a thing that can, that is possible. Um, and we mark for ob obliques. So to get the obliques, let's roll again. We got a 20. Oh yes. There's some directional locative marking. I was actually, thinking of just making this be a thing anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, um, so we have directional slash locative marking on the verb. So you can mark this and uh, so you can have directionals. I'm thinking I may actually also have associated motion on this because I, I have wanted to do that. And I think it would re be really cool for dragons because dragons can fly and dragons spend a lot of time navigating 3D space, right? So I would expect them to have very robust directional marking and, um, and, uh, and and like associated motion marking in three dimensions right so let's let's get these in here so that we don't forget put these in our notes uh there is a transitivizing causative verbs have directional and associated motion marking and we'll get to yeah yeah it's it it, it the, this 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 is gonna give me what i want um uh and uh i'm not and i i didn't even i didn't plan that i was actually thinking to to like jump over that if it didn't go that way but uh because you know we don't the dice are a fun tool to use but let's let's round out our our verb stuff and um i i i've mar i've put all these things into under verbs because all of them are are things where you could end up with some marking on the verb even though there are cases where like with this you could also end up with just a pronoun or with nothing, but we're going to do reflexive and reciprocal. I kind of like reflexives. 
I like to, I kind of like to have reflexive forms, but we'll see what the dice say about whether we have reflexives. And let me see. You guys can see the number better than me. Okay, 63. So between 53 and 63, there are only reflexive pronouns. So we do not actually mark reflexive on the verb or reciprocal. Uh, and and uh, also there are no... There's not, and the this is where, like, if I'm writing a book, I'm going to have to explain what things mean. I actually have a footnote in here saying when it says reciprocal pronouns, it specifically means ones that are not two quantifiers put together. So we could still have something similar to each other, where you would put two things together into reciprocal but we don't have a, a reciprocal that's like not derived from anything. So, uh, so we have, uh, let's see. Uh, so, so we're going to have to go up here and I'm going to have to add a pronoun section. We will come back to pronouns. And I am using the headings on Word so that I can have my my outline here and jump to where I need to go. So there are dedicated. There, there is there is at least one dedicated reflexive pronoun, and it doesn't have to be like something super. Why is this, uh, I'm going to, um, home, uh, how do I change my style formatting again? I'm going to have to do that, but I want to, what? No, I can't. Okay. I'll have to, I'm going to have to adjust things so that I don't have, this is clearly too small. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, styles. This should be normal, but it's not, it's clearly too small, but we'll, we'll get back to that later. Um, so here's all the verb inflections that we have to make. Uh, so we've done, we're done with nouns, unless we want to make up something that's like not, that's like outside of, um, um, a reciprocal pronoun is like, is like, um, they kissed each other, each other, that slot is where your reciprocal pronoun would go. English doesn't have a reciprocal other than that each other that 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 is clearly just two quantifiers put together but there are some languages that have a single reciprocal pronoun that's distinct from from two words put together but anyway we have our verbs and we have a perfective and imperfective uh, they agree with both the subject and the object um, there's a causative, um, and we have associated motion. This, we, we're going to have to break this down. We're going to have to have a pretty complex verb inflection paradigm, but, um, I'm thinking maybe we'll start with verb agreement. Okay. So let's make a table. 
So we're marking both subject and object, right? So we need to have a table of, what do we need? Um, we need three persons on each side. So, so let's, we'll do the subject ones down. Second subject, third subject. We, we don't have an inverse, so I'm not going to try to do any fanciness like direct inverse. I've done direct inverse alignment. It's cool, but you don't need to have the coolest thing in every single language. Um, so we have uh, first object, uh, second object, third object. Um, so this is for, for transitive verbs. So we're going to have to think about, are we going to, are we going to make these like, um, I, I think we're going to have, we're going to have to be agglutinative and we're going to have to, um, actually do this. Um, this, this chart will still be useful. But we're going to have to um, subject markers versus object markers. And then we go with like um, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Now, now with our nouns, I have, okay, I did not decide on whether the pronouns actually marked for case, which is a little bit interesting. And I don't like the way that my tables are constructed. I can't like isolate that and, and do that right now, but that's something that maybe we'll have to um, come back to when we get to pronouns. We, we can we can do that. Um, uh, so let's actually go and do our first poll. And I'm going to ask you guys. Um, let's start with the subject markers. So I actually have tables that that I could roll on for this, but I actually want to instead do um, do uh, do a poll to get that this so how are subjects marked and the question will be prefix suffix and just to to um, to throw in a little bit of chaos, we can ask, do you want to do an infix? It's not that common, but we could, we could add that just in case people want to do that. And then I'm going to take this off the screen and start the poll. And let's see what you all say. Oh, anyway, this is going to be an interesting project here. Do remember that we don't have any idea about word order yet. 
So you can't you can't base it on that. Okay, we've had eight viewers and eight votes. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the vault poll. And we almost ended up with an infix, but we're 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 doing prefix now. So subjects are marked with a prefix. Uh, and we are going to <laughs> Uh, you thought we were SO? No, I haven't. Um, I will think about whether I want to decide that. That might be our, my patron poll um, this week let, so that I can uh, get that down. Um, because, like, constructing the di dice table for that is kind of a nightmare, as I, I mentioned earlier. Um, but we will see um, what else comes up during the time. But uh, for now, we have just been doing inflectional morphology. That's like the the entire thing that we, we've done our phonology and we've been working on inflectional morphology. And that's all that we've done. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I don't know. Maybe Miles, you had it hadn't had me confused with another um, with with like Lang time or something. So let's actually pull up our um, let's actually pull up our oh, it's either going to be that or if we get to numbers, I have I have a really useful poll idea for, for numbers. Um, that's my email. I don't want to open my email right now. So um, let's go into our Lexifer. And or do we want to do we want to actually start? Let's actually Okay, here's 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 um here's here's another poll. I'm just gonna do this as a poll. Uh just a straight up yes or no. Are our uh um agreement verb agreement inflections re related to personal pronouns. That will give us a, a sense of like, can I generate the pronouns and then erode them away and, and get that? Or should we just do generate two times and do, do all of that? So you guys decide for me on that. Uh, okay. Because we actually haven't done anything on pronouns yet. That's uh, definitely a thing. One thing I will say, I have one table that I'm not going to use for probably for any of these languages. And that is um, um, this is this would be relevant to this is like do you have gendered pronouns? First of all, we don't have any noun classes at all, right? So it's going to be super unlikely. I'd have to roll above an 87. Um, and also it's like you don't need to have gendered pronouns. And there's going to be all kinds of like questions of like how do we refer to certain groups of people that I don't need to have if I don't have gender pronouns. So unless, you know, probably for these languages, maybe for a humanoid language, I would, I would roll for that and actually like delve into that and figure it out. Uh, but for draconic, I would, I'm going to say like, maybe they just don't, maybe I'm just going to decide that they don't, uh, by the way, this actually gave me a really super clear, 
um, demonstration of a hierarchy I already knew about when I investigated this in Grand Bank because like, look at this, okay? Super common to have none. And then uh, even more common to have only third person, less common to have the third person and second person. And then all three third, second and first person are, are uncommon. These appear in the data, but they're super, super unlikely. But like, that's the implicational hierarchy that I'd heard is that you would get it in third person, then in second person, then in first person. Um, end the poll. Okay, so are verb agreement inflections related to personal pronouns? Yes. So we're going to actually do our personal pronouns first then. And um, let's get into that. Um, and since nouns mark for plural, I'm going to have pronouns mark for plural. There's not a feature for that in Grand Bank. So I don't have a dice table for that. But that's something I already know is that it's like really rare to not mark um, number on pronouns in the first place. And especially if you have number marked on nouns, you're going to have number marked on pronouns. Uh, so we're going to do that. Um, let's go into our pronouns. Pronouns. And we're going to go with... Uh, so we'll have to, I'm going to say, since we've decided this, this, the, we're going to have this split and these are going to be related. We're going to have a, um, a, an, an ergativity split. Um, at, so this language is actually tripartite, but the ergative case will not appear in pronouns. So you're just going to have nominative accusative. So insert a table. And three persons, nominative and accusative. We do not have, um, we don't have a genitive pronoun, right? We're just going to have nominative and accusative. We don't have any dative, so that's all we have. I don't know how we're going to do that. So first, second, third, and why is my table super tiny? Okay, let's, let's, let's increase our font size so that you guys can actually see what's going on here. Um, and then we'll we'll figure out our reflexive pronoun in a bit too. Um, so let's go back to Lexifer, and let's we're going to generate. Um, um, so we need. We need six things, right? So let's go ahead and generate 12 and choose between them. Um, and, uh, okay. You have fifth, oh my goodness. Okay, you cheat. I think some of these are, are too much the same. So we're gonna try another time here. Ah, these are these are great for pronouns here. Pikta bikta bie atri apat. Okay. Um I'm gonna grab these three. Yeah. That yes, Madame Nies, this I I I am sis man but uh there's so much uh i i i interact so much online with uh trans people and there are so many 
generally LGBT people in my audience that I am very like conscious of how gendered pronouns in a con lang would end up, you know, doing would end up causing me issues, causing causing certain some people issues with like how they would ask to be referred to. So I generally well I so I in this is that the key does actually have a masculine and feminine distinction. Um but, and, uh, you know, that's actually something maybe I should think a little bit about in terms of how do people work that, work with that. There is a possibility of them using the animate, but that is like a questionable thing and you'd have to figure out the the cultural justification because normally the animate is like below the masculine and feminine categories in that language so yeah i don't want to i won't, don't want to deal with that gnarly stuff when i'm doing these D, D languages so i'm just like not going to do it at least in my my uh, exotic languages <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yes. It's there. There's tons of linguists and conlangers that are LGBT in some way. So I'm going to grab these three. These three are super cool, and I'm going to plug them into um, Lexergy and see what they spit out at me. I have fixed Lexergy, so it does have um, my romanization. That was harder than I thought it would be. Um, but let's apply these changes. Yeah, I'm not going to use that one. <laughs> That's going to be confusing. I think. I don't know. What do you all think? Should, should I use big as a pronoun? <laughs> let's, uh, let's go back here and see what else we have. Um, I think uh, of uh, all of the ones that are complex, the adre, 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 adre probably works best. And we can do some interesting things reducing that. So we'll, we'll grab that. We'll grab that. And we'll figure out where all these go. Um, Yeah, that's that's true. If you're if you're doing a real con, con culture, uh, a, a con culture seriously, and they have gender pronouns, then it would could be interesting to see how the debate shakes out for them. It's just not something that I'm necessarily going to do in any of the tongues and runes languages because it's not uh, where I'm going to be focusing. Um, Yeah, I'm not. I'm not being purist. Apu, 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 and that that becomes apa, 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 atri, 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 yeah, ad, adre, adre, adre. <laughs> That's really good one. We have um, <laughs> a, the imp of holding with a gun. Okay. 
<laughs> the word for child is dad. <laughs> okay. Um, up, up, up. Maybe ite, ite, I think is a word, one of our words that we have. Uh, we need, we need some, uh, we need uh, some, uh, so we, we'll, we'll grab, um, uh, pesp, uh, do we really want our first complex code to be that, though? Upesp. Upesp. That could be an accusative one, though. I actually want to... I think, actually, I want to do this. Yes, I'm going to use both of these. Uh, and that's going to be indicative of a, a, a historical relationship that existed in the past, but is not apparent. Uh, where was I? Okay. Um, and um, yeah, so we're we're going to do upesp, 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 upesp. And we're going to, hmm, we need another one. Unless you guys want me to use big. Let me, let me, let me let you guys decide. I, 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 I just want to, I just want to, uh, I kind of don't want to do it, but. Should we use big as a pronoun? Because <laughs> it's not gonna like hurt anybody. It's not a slur or anything. It's just, it's just like, it's gonna show up a lot. <laughs> it, it's and it's actually pronounced big, right? It's not, it's not big. It's big. So. That's one thing in its favor or disfavor, actually, because every English speaker is going to mispronounce it all the time. <laughs> it's a tie. <laughs> okay. We have nine viewers and eight votes and it's a tie. Somebody come and, and decide this. I'll give one more minute on this poll to decide this, and then I will decide. I Yeah, I can disguise stuff with orthography, but I mean, I've already decided what my romanization is going to be, and that's what people will read. <laughs> A dice roll? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I can decide. Um, let me uh, grab... Just an over-under D6 roll. Uh, okay, I'm going to end the poll. And I'm going to bring this down. If it's one to three, no. The, if it's more than, if it's four to six, yes, we do use it. Okay, no, we're not using big. <laughs> okay, uh, there. Okay, so this 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 gets canceled. This this is not there. So let me, I don't really like any of these other ones. Let's do another one. Kuta, kuta. Kuta, kuta. Let's see what it turns into 
And I think that one is a winner. Guta, Guta. So Guta, Guta becomes Guda, Guda. And that's a really solid one. So uh, I think I'm going to. So let's let's um, pull these in and put them into our our document. And we've got these. Oh, this is not the right document. I have too many documents open because I need too many things. And I'm going to actually rearrange these in a different way. So I will keep that. I, I'm going to make this into, do I want to make it third person or second person? We have Uba. Yeah, I'm going to make it, I'll make it third person. And okay, so this, this will be equals I. You wait, we need more than that. Right, wait, okay. Oh, so I we need more than that. We need uh, singular and plural. So let's. I think I, I I have a way I'll I'll do that. So um, let's let's grab this. And let's actually make this okay. Um, I'm gonna add add a row above. It's actually we're gonna have singular and then plural and then we're going to. And merge. I guess I can teach people how to use Word <laughs> on this stream. Uh, control X. So we have singular pl plural and then within that nominative accusative. These are going to be actually the nominative forms. And then I'm going to do some fancy deriv derivation of the accusative forms in a second here. So this is uh, he, she, they. Maybe we don't actually have an it because we can we can do that with demonstratives. And this is we um, y'all And they. This is singular. And then we'll plug them into the chart that way. So we had, um, we have, uh, Oh, I need to have this. Let's have this on the side so I can see it while I'm pasting it in. So we have. We'll we'll go here. Well, I'll just jump to pronouns here. So, good up, da, 
Ka and and uh, Uba, and then we have Be Be Adre Adre. and ubesp 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 and then we'll have to figure out so the accusative forms for that so we'll have good das gutach maybe No, I think I really want to have something. No, here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Good dash. Was the uh, accusative for everything, huh? And tesp. Okay. And we have a bear. Hey, uh, let's make this uh, for fun. Dash. B B address address Oh this is hard at basp basp address A A A A, -a, -a. <laughs> going to be difficult to do that and let's go ahead and grab a different so I have to I have to change this this is not how it is this is actually me yeah no no that's that's that one's right me you singular and object oh, this is all difficult and then this him her them singular okay and then let's go back here and we have the best and then here let's actually make both of these separate so we're going to generate new words here and uh, we'll get uh, EB EB would become EB no no that's not good uh, Got okay. Oh, let's let's get let's get some initial velar nasal action going. And um, just to for thoroughness, we'll plug it in here and make sure that it turns into ngi ngi. And we'll have that, and we will go and go into um, 
our draconic notes and we have ngi and ngesp ngesp okay <laughs> so we've got we've got all of these now we're going to take this and we are going to turn them turn the nominatives into subject markers so gu guda guda is easily this is good right ta we can keep it as ta uba uba Ub. do we do go with ub or we keep uba 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 what well, we need to have well we need to have the uh plurals and we've got be and uh adri adre 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 i think that one will just have gone all the way down to ah uh. and then but this third person has been we'll have uba uba versus ube now were for our object so what what would did we suggest okay now we don't know so we haven't decided on the object markers whether what what they're going to be so are they going to be prefixes or suffixes uh so let's say and we'll move this off screen and start the poll Three, 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 and dresp, three and dresp definitely do exist. Are possible? Uh, ad, adri, yeah, we could. You know what? I'm going to go with that. I'm going to actually say that this became three. just kind of randomly uh, I was keeping it to the first syllable mainly because we have um uh initial stress on this language okay and Paul so you all want me to do suffixes for those so I it's, it's like at some point this language was SOV and then the object markers got um so uh yes yes okay so all the art object markers keep the um they actually they actually lose the sp yeah okay they'll lose the sp uh Good day, good day, good day. So let's think of a verb. 
Let's let, I'm going to do something. I'm just going to to make a verb really quick. Let's let's make the verb eat. And we are going to have some fun here figuring out um, like how that would. Uh, so let's go. Um, okay, let's let's grab some of these, and um, we're going to. Gonna narrow this down to four of them. Let's do the applying the sound changes first. Uh, Asri. Asra. Asra. I don't like a poo and a pay. Okay. Uh, Uki Uki is good. EP I don't like. EP I don't like. Let's go with these four. Uh cheetah. 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 Okay. Uh okay, so let's <laughs> lots of polls today. Eat. And we're going to go with, so we'll have cheetah, cheetah, cheetah. Okay, okay. Asri. Asri. And uge. Uki. Uki. Oogie. It's hard, hard to keep keep doing unrounded vowels where I expect a rounded vowel to be. It's very difficult. <laughs> okay, start the poll. And um, where's my? Why is this not popping up? Let me stop sharing and then see if I can. What? Okay. Share screen. Entire screen. This one. Okay. That's really weird. The way the way that happened. Is are people still seeing me? Let's uh Okay. Oh, uh, let's do this so I can see. Okay, we've got six votes. Okay, let's end the poll. Looks like people really like two options. I'm going to do a runoff real quick, okay? What is the... Uh, what is the verb for eat? And wait, make this a poll. <laughs> Start a poll. And let's go with the two front runners here. Cheetah, cheetah and Asri. As, as, asre, asre, asre. And let's see how you guys like it. Okay. Six. 
somehow we lost a bunch of viewers suddenly. That's fine. Okay, and Paul. Okay. Chit chitta 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 chitta. That's what it is. So let me pronounce my own language correctly. So Yeah, okay. I think the I think um something something went weird with YouTube. Uh so let it, let's get on here. And so we've got chitta from this uh and we will get there. Um uh, chitta and that means eat and then we can think about okay so the reason i was doing that is i was thinking about how we how we are going to um uh how's this going to sound so we have uh, so chitta gudesp Chitta Gudesp. Gudesp. Chitta Gudesp. Chitta Gudesp. Chitta Chitta Des. I think that it's going to be a case of it's like Chitta Chitta Gudesp. Chitta Desp. Chitta De. Chitta De. Chitta de, chitta gede, chitta gede, chitta gede. No, I don't like that. Chitta gede, chitta gede, chitta gedesp, chitta gedesp. That last syllable ends up being very heavy. So I think it's actually going to be like the final syllable that ends up being what it is. And then we end up with like a dis, dis, the, the P gets S. Yeah, chitta desp is one thing I was thinking about, but I think actually it's just you know, chitta des, chitta des, chitta des, and the... And it's the one plural, no, one plural uh, is going to end up being be. And uh, so plural for the adre, adre, no, yeah, des, tesp, so te, that, that's going to be te, te. But these are going to be different, so te, this is what it ends up being. And then, uh, uh, and the, so, ad, address, chitta address, oh, ah. Uh, Yes, address. I'm going to actually keep that as this is going to interact with other rules to make a stem change happen in some cases. So it's uh, ad, adre. 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 This means we're going to have trills pretty often. We weren't going to have so many. <laughs> <laughs> and um uh upa besp besp yep 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 we'll keep ube 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 for the same reason and then ah we'll see this this should be word 
being too smart for me. Uh, I will fix that later. And this is uh, gesp. Nge, nge. This is fine. We'll just go with nge. Now, so that means for our different, we don't have any unmarked verb form. That may be helpful for us since we don't have passive marking in other ways. I could just leave off the subject marker to passivize. That might be something we could do. So we have goo. Yeah. Goo, goo, goo. And then let's be, be, be. Get this idea. Get the idea here. So ta 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 um. Uba uba uba. No, that's not be be be. Ooh, I have to do the the thing here too. Okay, so insert. Insert to the right. And insert. That's 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 something I have to think about. Okay. So um Yeah, so we have to insert. Where do we have, okay. Okay. This is gonna be the automatic capitalization. I hate that. It's constantly happening. So, yes, miles, that's something we'll get to. So we have um, some tense prefixes and some lax prefixes. And that is going to be the next thing I have you guys have a poll about is we want to um, 
let me let me fill in this chart and we will talk about that a little bit so we have ta Actually, this this is going to go all the way over. Should have done this in Excel and just like done a formula, but I am not doing that. Three. Um, and then Uba and Ube. Uh, distribute columns. Uh, yeah, there probably is, but the thing is, the thing is I've made my table with my font gigantic for, so that you guys can see, and I'm realizing I probably need to tone it down a little bit so that I can fit the entire table together. Um, so we'll have, it's not this, it's de. Maybe some really old dragons say this. And then we have B. What? Oh, that's hilarious. Be and be and then be. We can decide later if we actually want this to be a, 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 a legal thing because like we do have reflexive pronouns. Um, yeah, I can zoom in. Uh, view, zoom to 200%. And then maybe you can still see it while not having giant font. Uh, 14, 14, almost gets us there. Okay, whatever. Um, we can adjust, adjust some things a little bit and, and get it. Okay, so second person, the te. Now, here's the thing. For the suffixes, Vowel harmony is going to obliterate the tense lax distinction in the. It's going to obliterate a lot of the distinction in the suffix. Yeah, um, yeah, and but the. And I decided to keep that whole thing. But we do have to decide on whether let's let's go ahead and put that poll up while I finish this up. We're gonna have to decide do prefixes pass on their tenseness to the rest of the word or not? Or are 
well, let's just say that just straight up yes or no. So does the tenseness, the tenseness feature spread to the rest of the word from the prefix? And start. And we can figure out the details of how that happens. Uh, this 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 would ev add even more fun sort of irregularities to the verbs, sort of fake irregularity to verbs by having the stem actually change a little bit, even though it's changing in a totally regular way. It's still, you know, it's still changing. Okay, we've got six viewers and eight votes, so we think we can end the poll. And you guys said no. That's interesting. So here's another one for you. I'm going to ask, do prefixes assimilate to the harmony of the root? Before we had the idea that um, that the 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 vowel harmony would process from from left to right, so in that case they 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 wouldn't they would just they would just keep their own tenseness and then. And then um, they would that would be, but I'll let you guys decide whether we're going to stay with that or we're going to adjust it. Okay. Okay, we have several votes, and you guys said no, and you guys said yes. Okay, so that means that all of these, I guess that that does actually end up further obfusc obfuscating them from the uh, from the actual pronouns. So that's one one good thing that comes out of that, right? So with the pronouns, like sometimes this is going to end up being a guh, guh instead of a guh. So it will, it will, um, uh, I mean the, for the affix, so that will, that will further differentiate that from the pronoun. So I guess either way, there is something um, cool going coming from that. It just means that I have to do a little bit of extra work in uh, Lexergy in order to um, make that work um, and still get my uh, my stuff right out of it. So I've got that. Let's actually, uh, okay, so no, we don't want that. 
So we need to translate that back into IPA, right? So, um, oh, how did it w look before? Oh, geez. Okay. Well, I have the forms here. So we're going to take this and we're going to i'm going to take my word and i'm going to go back to the old forms and uh, and plug it in that way so we have you control z and and we will just go down the chart um, and six, right? And so we need the de, the de came from, oh, we need the, the be, which came from originally from this, okay. And then the day, um, oh, so yeah, so the where did the day come from? Day, good desk. Oh, okay. Um, good desk. Okay, so that still would have been I still would have been um, uh, there like that and then uh, what did what did uh, this actually come in turn into There. Well, where's the coming from? Tear. Tesp. Tesp. Okay. So, yeah, so that was, that would have been tear. Right, is the ta ta yeah became te and with this e it doesn't really matter but I I will make sure it goes in that way for for the sake of getting it right. And then ube, ube. And yeah, well, te. We've got adre, ad, uh, adre, adre, which is adresp, ad, adresp. So, ah, uh, adre. Uh, And we go 
with and then we have um, it's actually no so the plural should be nge I must have uh, hit the wrong thing riveting riveting live stream huh uh, what happened here so we have the upe which is this right and then yeah up, up, yeah and wait what happened here yeah that's right and then yeah okay which was mm, uh, it was just uh, I guess it was just okay I can't you guys can't see chat anymore let me get the chat up uh, where where's okay let's just restore it and then pop it out again <laughs> yes Jake And I should shut, change this to live chat, huh? There we go. Mm, just in case something gets lost. Okay. Nice to see lots of activity in chat, by the way. Okay, so that's that. And now we're going to copy this many more times. Uh, changing the things every time and so uh, we have be which historically was just a be just a pe right just spelled differently be And then we have, oh, this is going to be a super long list. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know how the, that works. Um, uh, it may be that they do things differently. Um, they're using OBS and I'm using Riverside and also like, I don't know where they're getting the chat from. What I do is I go to YouTube studio and go to the stream page and pop out the chat from there. They might be pulling it out of OBS cause OBS shows you the chat, but I don't know. I don't know what's, what's going on there. Why, why they're having that problem. They set it to live chat, but it shows as top chat on their screen for some reason that I don't know. Um, so, and that's and it's good. The, the good actually was, oh my goodness. 
this is this going to have some weird, crazy stuff going on here? Okay. Um, yeah. So Val Harmony. Oh, I have to re be super careful about this. So I have to fix my Val Harmony rule. Um. Right. Um, so both of these environments have to be between the pipes. I think that will work. And how am I going to identify what is a root and what isn't a root? I know what I'm going to do. And then we go, we have another Let's um, get this all sorted out. Um, let's get this. It takes a long time when you're doing this kind of thing, huh? Um, and then we've got uh, we've got um, ta. Yeah, ta, and that was underlyingly, that was historically, from just ta, right? And go back up here. Uh, go to verbs, right? Ta dri. So that was from from atri uh, at atri uh, well atri so. We'll just keep that. This is gonna make sense in a minute while I'm while I'm doing this. Um, I'm coming to the end of my time, but I want to see if I can show you guys what happens um, if I get this done. So, ah. Um, and we have, okay, so the same thing, but it's in the environment of before A pipe and at ATR and then we need to I probably should have make this a, a, a feature thing um, okay so no that's 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 fine I can do yeah, and and we can have we need to have this, right? Or yeah, 
Yeah, it's called a pipe. And then how do I have multiple environments? You need, okay, you need a comma between the two environments. Um, so we have this happen and then at ATR um, right and then the thing is the opposite has to happen if there's not ATR and ATR so um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I should be able to just do this if there's none. And it should and then and then reverse these. Control X Control V Control X Control V. And see, is this okay? Why is the at sign does not work? Um, okay, so how do I? Yeah, see you, Jonathan. Uh, I'm going to end in a second. I just need to find out what the not. Uh, what's the not operator for Lexergy? Uh, negated features. Uh, oh. Okay, the this is not what I want to see here. Yeah, so this is um I'm going to have to turn this into a feature then. Cuz okay. Uh so we're going to have to have feature ATR. And uh, oh, oh, you just have the uh, exclamation point. OK, I guess I can do that for now. I, I will. I, I'm going to I need to clean this up and and do things but we can have code that works for now so we'll have the there's no ATR and then let's see if needs an underscore okay I don't have I didn't have an underscore so ah troll Z troll Z what what the heck happened there so this one is for after. Okay, that's a very good. Uh, okay, and this one needs that too. Okay, so I'm just gonna. There we go. So since. Oh no, this didn't work right. No, that's not what I want to happen. It just stayed, it just stayed the same. So yeah, I need to figure out what is going on so that these can turn into So this this valharmony is happening. 
Oh, it's just like any ATR. Yeah, it's going to have to be a feature. So we're going to do feature ATR. And we're going to, um, so using a feature, features, uh, using features, we're going to have to make it a, we're going to use a binary feature. Um, and uh, because that will just make it easy enough. So we have feature, okay. Uh, and then we can declare symbol can we declare all these symbols at once and just say they're plus ATR Uh, I don't need a stress marker for these rules, I don't think. Symbol and uh, these are all of the minus ATR. Minus ATR. And then, so we can change this. We can change this to plus ATR. And minus ATR. Minus ATR. And hopefully that will, uh, okay, I guess I need to, how do we, how do we do that? Symbol A, symbol A. Um, what? Okay, maybe I need to declare these all separately.
Oh, wait, no. No, it's, we're going to have to have the absence of ATR somehow. Right, let's see what this does. Okay, this is this is what's going on here. Okay. This is going to be annoying to figure out. So can we can we do this without without doing all this work? If not, then I will go back and I will um control Z. Ah. Yeah, it's not it's not doing what I want it to do. In fact, it's doing things that I definitely don't want it to do. Why is it doing that? Yeah, I have to have I have to have an idea of what the root actually is. So this is not so I'm going to have to what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to replace any of these with the it's still not Okay, I am out of time. I am way over my stream time. So I am going to figure this out later. And I'm going to see all of you guys next week. And yeah, I think I'm just going to make the word order into a poll. And we will see into a patron poll, and we will see what that is next week. Because I, I, I haven't gotten to word order things, but I would like to be able to construct sentences fairly soon. So I will work that up and see you guys next week. Have a good time.